Hi, today's my presentation is on production of amylases by micro microorganisms. That is, we'll be talking only about the industrial process. So it's known that enzymes are the biocatalysts synthesized by living cells. So most of the living organisms, including fungi, they they produce 60% of the overall enzymes, and 24% uh, of the enzymes are produced by bacteria, and yeast produce 4% of the overall enzymes, and including even higher animals, they produce 6% of the enzymes, and 4% of the enzymes are produced by even higher plants. So amylase is one of the most widely used. Um, uh, basically, this amylase is a starch hydrolyzing. Enzyme. So it hydrolyzes starch. So what is this hydrolysis? So one uh, water molecule that uh, breaks up one or more chemicals in the reaction. So this amylase hydrolyzes the starch and it is used commercially for the production of sugar syrups from starch, uh, which consists glucose, maltose, and higher oligosaccharides. So amylase is of uh, great in, uh, significance uh, and it had. It has wide biotechnological applications starting from range, textile, detergents, brewing, pharmaceutical, fermentation, even paper industries. So uh, amylases can be produced by plants, amylases can be produced by animals also and also microorganisms. But microbial amylases have been given much priority because they have greater thermal stability, they do have uh, sugar profiles, different uh, varied uh, sugar profiles and also a long history of safe use. So however, due to efficient uh, production uh, strategies, microorganisms have a substantial potential to contribute to a number of industrial applications. So such industrial, uh, industrially important microorganisms are found within the bacillus species. So bacillus species, you have to remember, this is one of the most important uh, organism, a microorganism, which is being used in by almost all the industrialists for the production of amylase because they have rapid growth rates. That rapid growth rates lead to short fermentation cycle, and finally the production is more within short period of time. And even they have the capacity to secrete proteins into the extracellular medium and general uh, handling uh, safety is also when report. These are the reasons why bacillus species are most commonly used for the production of amylase. So there are three types of amylases. One is alpha amylase, beta amylase and gluco amylase. Of course, these three different types of amylases, they have, they have their own unique way of acting on starch as the starch serves as a substrate for that action. So these amylases are categorized into two classes or two groups. So one is endoamylases and second is exoamylases. So it's endoamylases, they act on starch randomly here and they're releasing dextrins. So dextrins, dextrins are uh, low molecular weight carbohydrates. These are formed when the long chain of a starch is broken in between due to hydrolysis. So these endoamylases, they act on starch randomly releasing dextrins. So there are two types of endoamylases, alpha amylase. Alpha amylase and debranching hydroglycoside band uh, bond. So alpha amylase are again of two types, isoamylase and pulinase. Exoamylases they act from one end of the starch. There are again three types: alpha amyloglucosides, beta amylase, and maltase. So microorganisms used in the production of amylase are bacteria, molds that is fungi, and yeasts. So bacteria there are. Uh, several uh, species of bacillus, Arenomonas species, Crustidium species, even Pseudomonas species, but uh, bacillus species like Subtilis, Lichenoformis, and Amalulcriformis are most important, and amongst the fungi, Aspergillus oryzae and oh, Aspergillus kavache, even Nike is also used for the production of amylase, including Rhizopus species. Is are Saccharomycopsis, Capsularia, and Amelomyces. Substrate obviously is the starch here. So starch is a polysaccharide. It is composed of two polymers. One is amylose and another is amylopectin. Now coming to the industrial process of production of amylase. So initially the, uh, <coughs> the bioreactors are uh, filled with fermentation medium. It may be corn medium, it may be soybean medium or any uh, starch medium. For, uh, uh, Along with this fermentation medium, some minerals like vermiculites are added or any uh, supporting materials that are capable of absorbing aqueous solutions are added in these 
bioreactor. After that, the, the stacks, the assembling of the modules in the form of stacks is uh, done, uh, which is operated in tandem, thus isolating the interior form of a uh, form from the exterior of bioreactor. Next, we need to add the sterilization fluid uh, such as steam or ethylene oxide into the stack through a communicating channels in order to sterilize the matrix at 121 degree centigrade for steam or at 50 degree centigrade for ethylene oxide. After introduction of sterilization fluid, uh, the fluid is cooled by using cooling water and also sterile cool air. So after cooling, uh, there is an introduction of appropriate amount of inoculum, either bacteria or fungi into the stack and adjust the moisture content. So there will be separate, uh, several uh, standard protocols. So the, the various industry, industry people, uh, they will uh, follow the standard protocol and adjust the moisture as per that requirement for the production of amylase. So once the inoculum is added, the inoculum is, the, uh, the modules are stirred in order to ensure the uniform distribution of the inoculum. So stirring is stopped prior to fermentation. Once the fermentation is started, uh, regular monitoring of the internal environment of the bioreactor using a probe uh, during the growth period is done. And finally, uh, during the process of fermentation, heat is uh, generated. So this uh, regulating of the heat is very much important. Uh, and it is done by either uh, evaporating, cooling or by conduction. Uh, since the conduction does not uh, result in dehydration of the fermenting medium, then it is the best media, media that heat regulation uh, can be used. So finally, uh, till this uh, step, the amylases will be produced. Next, uh, the amylase will pro next process is extraction and purification of the amylase. So extraction and purification of microbial amylases uh, has four major processes. One is centrifugation, uh, precipitation, filtration, and chromatography. Centrifugation is nothing but the process using the centrifugal force to selectively separate and settle particles separate suspended in a liquid medium. So once it is centrifuged, the liquid liquid is separated uh, and uh, sol solid is separated. Uh, in this process, the solid uh, liquid is taken and it is precipitated. After precipitation, it is filtrated by using ultra filtration or nano filtration uh, then over the uh, uh, the filtrate got from the filtration process this is subjected for chromatography method chromatography of the crude enzyme involves separation of enzyme in a solution due to its migration rate along the stationary phase so this gives the idea of separation of extracellular enzymes and intracellular enzymes in order to separate the extracellular enzymes Initially, uh, the, there is a separation of cells from the medium by either by centrifugation or by microfiltration. So after centrifugation, the medium is taken, the cells are excluded. That medium is again concentrated by the enzyme solution by nanofiltration. So through this nanofiltration again, uh, uh, this uh, con the enzyme is concentrated. So that filtrate after nanofiltration is subjected for a chromatography in order to get the pure enzymes. So this is the method of uh, uh, extraction of extracellular enzyme. So the same thing applies for intracellular enzymes as well. But here the cells are uh, taken uh, excluding the medium. Medium is discarded, cells are taken. The cells are um, treated with enzymes or they are disrupted by mechanical uh, disruption of the cell wall and membrane. After disruption, uh, it is uh, subject of a centrifugation or microfiltration. Uh, and uh, again, the filtrate uh, obtained through this centrifugation or the microfiltration, uh, the, it is again nanofiltered. So finally, that filter product, uh, product is submitted for chromatography, either for the process in, uh, in order to get the purified amylase. So quickly, uh, this uh, flow chart or the diagrammatic representation gives you an idea of completely the process of production, extraction and purification of amylase. So initially, the inoculum is allowed to uh, grow in a medium and that, uh, that is added into the inoculum tank. Inoculum tank will be having the stacks like this and uh, in this, uh, the raw material of uh, starch or fermentation medium is added and then it is con uh, uniformly stirred in order to ensure the uniform distribution of the inoculum throughout the tank. 
finally uh, the fermentation process is stopped and the cell uh, the, the cell uh, the liquid liquid is collected and it is subjected for centrifugation after centrifugation uh, the the cells are taken they are disrupted after disruption they are they are filtered and after filtration cell debris are separated only filtrate is taken and filtrate obviously will be having the nucleic acids and this is again uh, uh, treated with salts after treatment of salts it is kept in cold storage after some time it after cold storage um, the treatment it is filtered and finally filtrate is subjected for chromatography for a separation of a pure amylase enzyme once the pure amylase enzyme is separated by chromatography method it is freeze dried and after freeze drying it is converted into enzyme powder and it is sealed in a bottle at certain temperatures mature temperatures in order to use for the further use now the uses of the applications of microbial analysis as i already told that it is having a wide industrial applications uh, like it is used in starch industries milling industry alcohol industry baking industry brewing paper industry textile sugar laundry and detergent industries as well so just quickly i will just uh, tell you one or uh, one or two uh, industries and uh, organisms and their applications so in starch industries bacillus species is used and this bacillus um, amyl is produced by this bacillus species is used for the liquefaction of starch for production of glucose fructose and maltose and in milling industry aspergillus species is used and it is used for modification of diffusion flour and in paper industry bacillus species is used and uh, it is used for liquefaction of starch without starch sugar production of sizing of paper and in laundry and detergent industries Uh, this uh, bacillus species is used, and the amyl is produced by this bacillus species. It increases increasing cleansing power for laundry soil with starch, and it also uh, uh, is used as an additive in dishwasher uh, detergents. So these are a few applications of uh, uh, microbial analysis, and hope uh, that is. Uh, that is it uh, for my today's presentation and it is very quick and easy information for all the students and teachers who are interested to know about briefly about the production of um, uh, amylase by microorganisms so that is industrial production and see you in the next video lesson